do 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 Hello to all the hair besties in the land. I am here with Maritza. Sexy Latina. Tell us your story. Tell us your story. Introduce yourself. My story. Wow. Well, my name is Maritza. I am Mexican American. I have really great hair here that I never. I have very. I'm very low maintenance, so I basically get it done maybe once every two years. The last time I got it dyed was maybe a year ago. So I need your help. It almost looks like it starts to get kind of stringier and thinner at the bottom here. If you guys take a look. So we might give her what I call a nipple trim, which is just a little bitty nipple trim. And then we're gonna give her the stardust backcombing technique. So I'm gonna give her kind of like a, a balayage looking highlighty feel without balayaging her hair, because we're gonna use foils, okay? So I want you to share your story with us. Well, I have vitiligo. Um, it's actually a skin condition. It's a lack of melanin. So what happens is that parts of your skin turn white um, and I have it right Where? here under my arms. Cool. I have it in certain areas in my back and around my eyes, but our uh, very talented makeup artist was able to cover those. I'm kind of curious, like, do you ever go through um, any issues growing up having this condition? Like, do you feel judged? Do you feel lack of self-confidence? Yes, because there's certain jobs that I can't do because I have this. But I was lucky enough to get it when I was a bit older. I was already 17 years old. How old so are you now? I'm 25. 25. So I was um, mature enough to understand that you're beautiful, just how you are. So I've always been very accepting of it. Embracing. Embracing We it. call it embracing, not accepting, because <laughs> accepting is like you just deal with it. I guess this is it. I chose her to come in to be our model today, and she was telling about her condition. I go, Anne, what's your point? Because you're beautiful Thanks. just the way you are. Yes? Yes. Are you ready to get started? I'm so ready. Because this is your identity, <laughs> and we don't care what anyone says, because we're going to break <laughs> stereotypes left and right. Ready to get started. Here we go. All right, guys. Oh, let's let. Go, go. Go, go, Power Rangers. Do, 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 do. All right, guys. I'm going to use my identity, Magnum 8. And it's called Magnum 8 because it has the ability to lift up to eight levels. It's in a powder form. And I love having the options of having Big Nine, which is right over here, y'all. Big Nine. You could, you could actually mix them together, but I'm just gonna keep it clean today and just do the Magnum 8. So we're gonna measure it one to two ratio. That's my favorite. You could also mix it one to three ratio or one to one. But today we're gonna mix it one to two. This stuff smells so gentle. It has a lavender fragrance, especially with the developer, but don't be fooled, okay? Magnum 8 or Big 9, they're strong. All right, so 77 grams, and we're gonna mix 30 volume into that. Here we go. And I'm gonna introduce my best friend, Ariana. My identity artist. Hi. I said my identity artist. <laughs> <laughs> the words won't come out. You guys, we've known each other for how long? Seven years. Seven years. We've been together for seven years and yes. we became closer every year. Every, <laughs> every year. Every year. We learn something new about each other, right? Every we never, time we're together. We never stop learning, no. right? So we are gonna use a little bit of Olaplex. This is all you need is 132 of an ounce. We're gonna pour it in while she's mixing. Look at that consistency, guys. I mean, look at that creamy consistency. Whip it up, Ariana. All right, so I'm gonna section Maritza's hair in four quadrants first. So I'm gonna clip this piece out the way. And then in the back, I'm gonna divide it in half here. I'm gonna use what I call my stardust technique. Every time I show my stardust technique, it comes out differently on each model's head because everybody's hair is differently. So I wanna show you guys how I do it on Maritza's hair. Okay, so her hair's a lot finer. When you take a look at the ends here, it starts to thin out a little bit. I want to overlap some of these pieces and see if anything happened and I'm gonna cut into it. What I do is I do a zigzag parting. So I go very, very deep. I go down, up, down, up, down, up. Do I want that big of a chunk? It, I don't think so. I want the highlights to go up as high as possible, right? So I'm gonna go higher, okay? So this is gonna be the veil instead. So I'm gonna take a smaller section. When you look at the top of Maritza's head here, you'll see that subtle zigzag right in through there, right? This will ensure that when this veil's over, it becomes a, a seamless blend, concealing any stripage that's hiding in through here. And we are gonna glaze and tone over it to blur it away. Okay, so right underneath that, 
I'm going to take another zigzag section parallel to that, right? And you'll see my triangular parting right through here, right? So I lift her hair all the way up, just like so. And I'm going to do a back comb from 180. And then drag her back down. And then I'm going to back comb from the surface. And this is the part I'm going to ombre, right? I'm going to get my long foils. I'm going to place the foil right underneath that, right through there. And then I'm going to paint Magnum 8 Powder Lightener directly over. I'm not afraid to overlap her previous blondes because it's not as light as it appears. I feel like a lot of times when we do these back comb ombres, we always feel the need to back comb all the way up to the scalp. And then what happens is it, it doesn't look transitional and soft anymore. That W pattern ensures that there is no harsh line. So I never go in horizontally and just paint a hard line into it. You'll still see me stroke vertically going in. I'm just gonna turn the ends into the foil because at this point it's gonna be fine. We never want to fold the foil up because what happens is you're gonna smash this on top of that. So you'll see us overlay just like that. And what I do, flip this over and then I'm gonna do another zigzag parting parallel to that section there. And I repeat the same thing. And Ariana, tell us your stories. What struggles have you fought and gone through? Well, my dad's Mexican. My mom is not. She's born and raised in the U.S. Is it hard because you are biracial? You are, it makes you feel like you're being... It was hard when I was little. You kind of don't know where you identify with. Where you identify I... with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You want to be, you know, fit in with the kids at school and not all of them understand that you have a different background. Right. So you sometimes find yourself hiding a little bit and then you're like, wait, why am I doing that? I should be proud of that. What age were you when you when you felt proud to be uh, Mexican, mixed American? I think it happened in junior high. It was a little late, I think. No, you know <laughs> what? That's not that late. For me, it was, a, it was probably when I was, I don't know, in my 20s, okay? Oh, okay. okay. So, so you're, you're, you're not too late, okay? Late. Sometimes, my Mexican family, oh, you're the gringa. Yeah. <laughs> but is, is a gringa a bad word or a... It no. Can be, uh, the way they say it sometimes can make you feel embarrassed a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I felt that way when I was little, like, oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So do they, do they make you feel like you're not proud to be... Your I family. felt like I wasn't Mexican enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't know if you've ever seen Selena. I, I love okay. the movie Selena. <laughs> There's a scene where the dad says you have to be more American than the Americans and then more Mexican than the Mexicans. Oh my God, that's so true. Yeah. Though. So I'm on her second quadrant now. So you can see all the foils I have here. It's all foil overlay. There's no folding up. But what you will notice here is that I left the bottom out. Leaving that last nape area out is so important. We don't want to emphasize short hair. We want to elongate that length by bringing drama to it. And also leaving this dark, when it lays on top of one another, you'll see a blend. So again, I'm gonna do one more section here so you guys get to see how I do this. I stretch the hair up, back comb it all the way down, creating a cushion all the way to her scalpage, and doing one more tug. That's all you need. So now I'm gonna lay the foil down just like so. It's only been about 20 minutes here um, going into the application. Take a look at that. See, look how blonde that hair looks, right? And it's like the perfect blonde. So we're gonna let her sit and process and incubate a little bit more because we still need to hit her front and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna peel one open for y'all so you guys get to see what's up. <gasps> oh my gosh, can you guys see that? We gotta zoom into this here, right there. <gasps> <gasps> that is Amazing. Magnum I didn't want to see the look on your face. Let's show her. <laughs> let's show her the first foil. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see that? Yes. Is that exciting? Are you ready? All right. I'm ready. Your <laughs> life is going to be changed forever. I'm ready to see if blondes have more fun. Time to break stereotypes. Well, well can we? I mean, well, not blonde. Redheads can have fun too. Okay, guys. Her. We're just going to have fun. See you later. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, we are back. And look at Maritza's hair, she's blonder. When you turn, you see that exciting ombre type of transition, but yet you get that face frame. And we didn't have to do so much. I think less is more. So come on over here and watch me mix. All right, guys, so right now, I'm gonna use my Danny Demi Permanent 9 IG Ice Gold. So I'm gonna do a full tube of the ice gold. And I always 
like to use Demi Permanent because we're only depositing. Keep in mind that my identity Demi Permanent color is acidic, has a pH of 6.7, so you're not gonna break that base. I'm able to glaze, give it that tonality, add the shine, and blend some of these uh, highlights that you see here from the backcombing ombre that I put in. At the same time, give the blonde tonality. And I'm gonna put half a tube of six ice gold. All right, here we go. I only wanna make sure that I give it a little shadow to the transition. That's really important to me. That's why the level six comes into play. I'm gonna do 75 grams there. Okay, so it's one to two ratio. Okay, so I'm gonna go in the six volume. Now you have the option of doing it one to one ratio if you want more pigment. And the reason why I don't wanna do that because we don't want any base shift. So one to two ratio is usually my recommendation and go-to formulation for a glazing. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this first formula. Adding that six in will give me almost, I would say like a level eight. So we're gonna go in with Olaplex one here and keep in mind, you don't wanna put too much. Okay, I always put about that much in. We're gonna pour and this is gonna be the base formula for her boutage and this is gonna blend away any stitch marks from the foils, okay? She's gonna be the first formula. And I'm gonna put a black brush in there to kind of signify that this is gonna be the shadow root. I'm gonna mix a full tube of ice gold and this is gonna be my transition color where you'll see it primarily through here blending down. Any parts that's extra icy through here, I'm gonna formulate those with a clear with the ice gold so that way they stay nice and bright. Okay, so what makes the ice gold tonality so unique is that you see the warmth of the gold, but there's an iridescent tone to it that keeps it cool. So it's a balance of both worlds. I love when it's like hot and cold at the same time. You're hot and yo cold, you're yes and yo no, you're in and yo out. Okay, one to two ratio. Okay, and after I stir the level nine ice gold. Okay, pour Olaplex in goes there. All right, so this is gonna be our last formula, is the nine, level nine ice gold. I'm gonna use half a tube of this, about 30 grams. Okay. All right, so we're gonna squeeze in 30 grams of crystal clear. And the crystal clear is so important when you want to shift the tonality. So if you want to make your level nine, a level 10 ice gold, you put a quarter ounce of clear in. For every quarter ounce you add into your formulation of a full tube, you're gonna make it shift a level lighter. So a nine can become a 10 and you could add another quarter of crystal clear and make it appear like a level 11. So you shear out the tonality to make it softer. The more crystal clear you add in, the lighter the color is, which gives you versatility in all of the shades. It gives you that acidic demi base, but with no tonality, no pigment in it. We can't get over how beautiful you are. <laughs> You're very handsome. Oh, thank you. Can you say that again? I didn't hear you. <laughs> you're very handsome. Sorry, she was laughing, so handsome. I couldn't hear. Handsome, you're very handsome. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak a little louder? I, oh, you said sexy? Is that what you said? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so we have shadow routage, we have our transition color, and we have our lightest color. Formula number one is our Chateau Ritage. I'm gonna put it on her base just to add more color deposition, also to blend any stitch marks that you see here. And then nine IG Ice Gold is gonna be the transition color or the foundational color, right through here where it's more yellowy. And then right, right where you see a lot of the icier, whiter pieces, if you will, that's where I'm gonna swirl in the, t the color that I used crystal clear on because we don't want those to go dark. A lot of times when we're dealing with color or hair with um, a porosity issue, it can go dark and suck up pigment and it won't look cute because all of that lightning will be gone to waste. And we don't want to waste all of that beautiful lightness. All right, here we go. We're going in. We're gonna bend her head down and we're gonna place the first formula down in her routage. And because it is a level six ice gold, which ma matches her level six, we're gonna get more of a, a tonal uh, glazing deposit on her natural hair here. 
And I always like the hair around her face to stay as light as possible. So I try not to get the, um, the shadow routage formula around the face frame line, okay? I like to outline to define all the quadrants to each section just to keep everything clean. It really helps us know where and trace where we're going. So that's why I always put the base formula down first. Sometimes hair Bessie question me like, why don't you just put the colors on as you go? Well, what I find is that if I start at one section back here and I did six and I'm just gonna put the nine down and then the 10, what happens is because the color is still developing, you're blurring it all together. And I don't want to do that. I want to let the color sink in. And what happens is when the colors sink in first, you're getting more of the, uh, the emollients or the conditioning base that the color sit in. It's just sitting at the top of the hair. So when you're doing your melting or blending technique, you're not dragging the dye that's sitting there down and contaminate her ends, right? So that's why I do it this way. It gives it time for the dyes to soak into the hair and blend seamlessly. All right, so I got done putting down her Chateau Routage. So we're gonna go in with the foundational formula. Let me just spread her open here. So we're gonna get inside. So this is where you're gonna see me blend the colors down, right? So I'm gonna use my two fingers and get in there. <laughs> use my two fingers and get in there. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have nine ice gold blending down until you see me go over all the yellow pieces that I find to be a little bit brassy because we don't want any brassy lassy pieces in there. As I move it down, I'll start to see these ends here that look a little bit icier. That's where I'm gonna leave those ends out. Okay, and those are gonna be the ones with the clear on it. So you wanna leave them out. So that's very, very important. I feel that every time when we're doing um, any type of color melting, we tend to just wanna slap the toner all over the head. Uh, and then we're putting it on an uneven canvas. The canvas is everything. You can't just put one formula over the whole head and expect it to be even. You have to take a look at where the light is and where the dark is and which formula needs to be placed where. I always let the color process for the full 25 minutes. I find that that's very, very important. I feel like, even though you do have the option of maybe rinsing it off sooner, what happens is the color didn't have time to stabilize and fully mature and develop inside the hair strands. So I find that's very important to let everything sit and marinate into the hair for the full 25 minutes. So that way it, you have maximum longevity and full dye development. So you can see right here, it's very, very warm. As I lift it up, look how icy that is, right? Let the color process the full time we can't rush, okay? I know sometimes life gets hectic, we're rushing to go places, but honestly, the color is the, is the most important priority here. We gotta make sure everything looks seamless. And a lot of hair besties wants to know my secret. That's my secret, is that I don't rush the color formulation. Patience is the key to success. All right, so I just got done applying the foundation formula down. Now it's just the ends that are left out. So this is the one I'm going in with the clear. So you'll see me just swish it in, blend it in, use my two fingers, grab all the pieces that were light and left out because if we pull the same color down, those ends can be dark due to porosity and it won't be as defined and cute. If, if the ends are too porous and it soak up all of the, the tone, it can look a little bit dull, right? So we wanna give the hair life, not make it dull. Adding tone, but not overtone, right? So you'll see me just use my fingers here and just swish the tones in. Okay, we're gonna let her hair process for a full 25 minutes and we're gonna be back. Oh my gosh, guys, Maritza, <laughs> your hair is gorgeous. The ice gold is everything, the shine, that iridescence in the gold is like hot and cold at the same time. Nora, what do you think about it? I'm in love. Like, it's the perfect balance of gold. It's Gorgeous. It's everything. I think everything. the name says it all, right, Ariana? Yes. Bringing gold back. Nice gold. She's like a Victoria's Secret model, right? <laughs> How do you feel about being blonde? Step forward to the. I'm loving it. I just want to say thank you to a great team. Thanks so much, guys. I'm in love. Did you find your identity? Yes. Take take it off. Take it off and own it. Yes. Yes. Do a little spin for us. Yes. Work that hair, girl. Work it. it. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed. The girls are obsessed. Obsessed. Click thumbs up, leave comments below. I wanna know what you guys think of the technique, the ice gold, and we're all excited. Subscribe to my channel. Links are all below to stalk the girls of my identity, plus the model. Love you guys. Bye.